Orlando police officers are accused of police brutality after the release of this video. An onlooker captures 30-year-old Noel Carter sitting on the curb, kicked repeatedly and tased by police arresting him, resulting in several injuries. In a year where America has been forced to deal with the difficult issue of how law enforcement and certain parts of the population interact, the video from a night in Orlando, Florida ranks as one of the more disturbing pieces of evidence that there has to be changes on all sides of this issue. Noel Carter is the man on the street being kicked by off-duty cops. It's what led to this incident and why neither officer has been suspended pending the outcome of, a, of an investigation that leads us to question everything. So let's welcome Noel Carter and his attorney from the firm of Lawler Ziegler, Patrick Lawler. Gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. Good evening. I understand there's certain things that you will have to answer, but I'm going to direct my questions to you if you don't mind anything in there. Let me ask you first of all. The Orlando Police Department claims, and I've got all the reports in front of me and all the different stories, they say you were drunk, they say you were intoxicated, you were resisting arrest. How much of this is true? How much do you, do you admit to? Um, I mean, to be honest, I, I, I don't admit to being intoxicated. I don't admit to being drunk. Um, I don't admit to resisting arrest either. I admit to being beat up. I admit to being brutalized. Um, and I admit to being taken advantage of by the Orlando Police Department. Was there any time in your interaction with the police because you were at a club correct that's correct when you came out of the club any time when you remember being belligerent when you were trying to fight with the officers anything that they might have taken as resisting arrest I, I think if you've seen the videos for yourself at as, as most of America most of the world has seen as well you see me with my hands up um, and with the with everything that's going on in the news with police brutality I think um, just being submissive having your hands up is is gives the police officers more than enough incentive to be docile themselves um, and if they are attempting to take you into custody not to shove you um, not to beat you not to tase you um, and essentially not to, to take advantage of you um, and to essentially to treat you less of less than a human then if none of this happened why did they treat you like this and why was this officer kicking you in the head uh, I think that's the attitude of the police department that you're gonna get in downtown Orlando um, speaking to many of my friends who live there a lot of them just wait for that uh, they wait for that type of action to happen if they they feel somebody's drunk they feel that they can um, be excessive with them um, it, amongst friends that I know that are police officers it's kind of an unwritten law I guess amongst police officers if you run uh, you get a beating um, and essentially I ran in fear of my life I was already being beaten outside of the club with a, a nightclub um, or a nightstick and essentially I ran. I was in fear of my life and once I got to that curb you saw what happened after that. What about the woman who supposedly was a girlfriend? I'm talking about an unidentified woman that's here in this story in the Orlando Sentinel said my friend speaking about you mm -hmm. did not cooperate because of intoxication. I was arguing with him to leave me alone and he didn't listen. Is she lying? Yeah I think in that report um, I think those words were kind of given to her by the officer who was doing the arrest. Um, it, to use the word intoxication that's the narrative that the officers have been using from the start. Um, so for her to put that in her report. I think she was kind of fed those lines to put into that statement, but that's just my opinion. Um, I don't think I was intoxicated. I think I was more than coherent enough to, to explain to the officer that, hey, we're having a conversation. I don't really feel this involves you. Um, and that's essentially where the situation stemmed from. Um, they're going to take certain precautions as police officers, and I can understand that. But to be as aggressive as they were, I think it was definitely out of the line, unprofessional, and, and, and definitely I'm um, not called for. Is this then, in your opinion, just a racist police department who targeted you only because you're black? No, I definitely don't think so. One of the officers was black, actually. Um, one of the officers who you see tasing me in that video is he's a black man. Uh, so definitely, it's not a race issue. It's an excessive force issue. And that's what we're dealing with this, in this country, is uh, police officers being excessive and, and brutalizing citizens for no just reason or no just cause. So I, I don't stand with that as a, as a racist motive or them coming after me because I was black. I, I don't think that's the case. Um, there I are those though, who would say that probably is the case. If you look at what's happened in the last year, the knee-jerk reaction for many people is simply because you're a black man, the cops wanted to come after you. Yeah, I mean, that, that could be common. Yeah, that could be commonplace. I'm sure that's been the motive in, in many other instances, but I don't think that was an underlying motive in my instance. I think in my particular situation, I think that the female who wrote the report, um, she was crying at the time that the officer spoke to her. And that's the reason that I wanted to continue to speak to her. And I think the officer, in terms of a, a machismo attitude, decided to make an example of me and wanted to belittle me and essentially emasculate me in front of this woman. Patrick, very quickly in a moment, though, do you have and are you gathering evidence that you believe indicates a police cover-up? Yes. Yes. The, the reason we say that, if I can, uh, the first video came out from on the balcony, and as a girl said, she heard a ruckus, got her phone. You got to remember, she heard the ruckus, had to find her phone, and then get the video, and you see the kicking Which at the Which is the, the end. kicking video. Right. The, the one from the balcony, because there's two videos. 
the one from the balcony. So once that happened, that happened on a Thursday night. If you look at the initial report, it's about two paragraphs. Nothing about any of the stuff that you saw subsequent to that. After that, when the video came out on a Friday, that weekend, the police officers obviously got together and how can we justify this kicking that's on that video? Uh, my understanding is they went out to the area to see if they could find other video, which they couldn't. So then they supplemented the report on, at 4 a.m. on Monday morning. Came out with it Monday. We went up there for a press conference, and all we had was that video. So you believe that's more than just standard operating procedure to get more of an investigation? I don't think... They went I, above and beyond. I think you can do that, but if you look at the initial one, I think it, it would never have happened had the video not came out. They had to justify it. Now, here's the interesting part, is that when they came out with that, the whole context of both... Officer Mays and Officer Cruz's report was to say that Noel was the aggressive one, that he attacked them after he sat on the thing, went after them, and here's what happened. That I, afternoon came the second grainy video. I only have 30 seconds left. What do you want? Do you want justice? Do you want these men fired? Do you want money? That's what people will ask. What I want is justice. I want my name cleared. I'm a banker. I'm a professional. I've kept my name clear uh, for the 30 years that I've been on this earth, and, and I don't think that this particular instance warranted me being arrested or even um, a conversation between my ex-girlfriend at the time to be intervened by the police. Um, this is a situation that they caused. They escalated it, and I just want my name cleared. That's what I'm looking to get done at this time. We're out of time, but would you do us a favor, and would you come back again as this goes on? Because this is a case I think that all of America is interested in, and we need to follow up on this. If this is the way cops are going to be, we need to ensure that this stops as long as you're you're happy to have me here um, i'm sure pat would would you know be, to keep, exactly uh, we're happy to follow this. the story thank you very much good luck thank you pat. thank you so much for thank being you. here all right stay with us this is the fastest 60 minutes of news we'll continue to follow this story and more as the hard line continues